Let's take a look at some information and charts on Swerve for Brave New Coin. So much like the original, the OG Curve, Swerve is a fork of Curve. It is a DEX AMM focused on swapping between DAI, USDC, USDT, and TUSD. Very simple at its face, a necessary service, and Curve certainly has gained a lot of popularity, notoriety. Curve has many more pools compared to Swerve. Swerve has an anonymous founder. It has no VC interests. It has a different coin distribution curve tokenomics relative to Curve. Thus far, based on the information I'm about to show, it hasn't really found a foothold amongst the rest of the DeFi stuff. It looks as though it's almost been pushed to the wayside. Uh, we can look at the curve pools and we can look at the total reserves. Uh, this, you know, this pales in comparison to curve. I don't want to make this a curve show, but when you compare it to its fork or its original version, the party's not really happening at uh, swerve compared to curve. If we look at the TVL for swerve, the TVL exploded to nearly a billion as they quickly distributed a bunch of coins very early on. The incentives were extremely high at that time. As soon as the incentives fell off, so did the TVL. And it looks as though at the moment, the incentives to hold money on Swerve just are not there relative to everywhere else. If we zoom in a little bit on the 90-day TVL, it has increased, nearly doubled, I guess doubled from um, mid-March to mid-April. But in the grand scheme of things, it's been unable to really compete against uh, Curve from that perspective. You know, if you're a TVL person, if TVL is important to you, then you're probably looking at this thinking, you know, what's going on here, right? D-Bank has TVL at uh, 25 million for Swerve, but volumes are stagnant and down over the past year. Transactions the same users the same. So it's hard to be bullish on the coin, which for me, baseline, all of these governance tokens are theoretically worthless. And when I see no users behind a network, that tells me that people don't really care. <laughs> people, If people don't care about the network, they're definitely not going to care about the governance token. So why should I be bullish on a governance token when no one seemingly cares about Swerve? The other thing about Swerve is that it Looks as though it's not included in any of the routing yet. I may be wrong on that. This is um, the other thing about Swerve is it's potentially an Asian, has an Asian influence. It's li listed on a lot of Asian exchanges, but not so much on US based exchanges. So it hasn't quite, it doesn't have that interoperability angle that I can see compared to everything else. Even when I look at the numbers or try to look at the numbers, DEX wise, Swerve isn't even included on like the, uh, Dex metrics I look at. So it's hard to even compare head to head. So they definitely need to push some sort of increased interoperability with everything else. You know, if they're not at the playground, if you're not at the table with everybody else, it's going to be hard to accrue any value relative to DeFi relative to everything else, right? If, you die, if you're dying in the dark, you know, that's the worst way to go for an altcoin. Here's transaction counts and average transaction values. You can see transaction counts exploded on the initial token distribution and then basically fell to kind of where they are now. You can see transaction counts have mainly been sub 200 since February. Um, along with the rise in ETH fees, all these services really took a hit. So maybe if maybe Swerve can pull ahead by saying this is our layer two solution on ETH, our fees are going to go to zero, you know, something. They need to do something to compete, which as a consumer is great because all these services competing means I'm going to get a better experience. But if I'm a swerve holder, I'm certainly nervous that in the near term, it looks like they are just uh, floundering relative to everything else, dex wise. Um, NVT, inverse metric of economic utility, and active addresses. Um, NVT has mainly just held flat. There hasn't really been a ton of on-chain activity, so it's hard to even know if NVT's a signal at all here. Um, active addresses continue to fall, so in a vacuum, it's 
just hard to be bullish on a coin that has stagnant TVL, stagnant user numbers, stagnant transactions, stagnant active addresses. I mean, that's just not a recipe for success on token price. So if we flip to technicals here, we have 5,200 EMAs on the 12 hour uh, VPVR volume, RSI. This is Huobi on the 12 hour. Another issue is that Binance doesn't actually have a USD pair. It has a BUSD pair and a BNB pair but it doesn't have a USD pair. That's part of the whole interoperability thing. If if I can't trade Swerve with USD or USDT, there's just a barrier there between people's ability to, to you know pay attention to this coin, period, end of story. So they need more pairs on exchanges. They need to be included in metrics. They need to be included in the conversation if they want to play the game. Um, technicals, though, look okay. You can see it's above the uh, 12-hour 200 moving average. It's above volume support. It had this uh, cup, potentially cup and handle thing that failed. Uh, it just doesn't look too, too exciting on the USD pair. For the most part, it's just held this range since, um, you know, since post initial incentives wore off. So again, it hasn't really, it doesn't look like anything I want to buy and hold. It doesn't look like anything anybody wants to pay attention to. It just it's just not exciting compared to everything else, right? 12 hour cloud is bearish. Bearish TK cross, bearish cloud, price below cloud. There is a pretty large TKC clamp here suggesting oversold conditions. But again, on trend, this doesn't look too, too exciting on the 12 hour cloud. Just looks like it needs to go sideways, figure itself out, have some more time. Um, this is the type of thing you want to see an ascending triangle into a bullish Kumo breakout. I mean, that's the, sort of like the gold standard for long entry signals, uh, a chart pattern into a Kumo breakout or breaking the 200 day moving average. You know, it was above the 200 day moving average here as well. Prior to that, it had a bullish divergence on the lows. So right now it just doesn't look like, you know, there's no there there for me for Swerve USD. Here's the Swerve BNB chart, which again, no real bullish anything since listing. Hard to get excited about a chart that looks like this relative to everything else in DeFi. So definitely not bullish on trend. If I was trading this, I'd be looking for a bullish divergence of some kind at lows here, but Cloud does not like this on the long side. Swerve BTC has held a pretty wide range from 1,000 to four or 5,000 sats. And again, no real bullish strength over an extended period of time. Um, it did well in January along with everything else. But since uh, mid-February, it's just stayed in the zone basically hasn't really done too too much of anything i'd start paying attention to this you know just set if i was serious about wanting to trade this i would set alerts for like 4900 sats when it gets back up there then it's probably worth paying attention to but right now it's just ranging 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 it reminds me of bat it reminds me of zrx it reminds me of maker it reminds me of so many coins that have just stayed in sideways zones for an extremely long time and eventually they did something but until that fateful day when they break above the resistance it's just difficult for me to want to trade that as a trend trader to want to buy and hold something that looks like this swerve eth very similar same spiel just wait for a breach above resistance something above 0012 probably set alerts for that and then start paying attention to it right now it's just kind of in chop city lastly i'll just mention the DeFi portfolio we have on enzyme Swerve is not included in that list. Hopefully it's obvious why not relative to everything else <laughs> based on what I just said in the video. Um, but there'll, there'll be about 15 to 20 coins in here with various allocations, various percentages. How this works is it's a non-custodial portfolio management tool with complete transparency. You can see all the trades I make and when. You can see deposits, withdrawals. You can see everything, AUM, performance. They, there will be a link for this in the video description below. So that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.